In this episode, we're gonna take a look at Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. What is it? How does it work? And more importantly, what can it do for you? Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So nice to see you, especially if this is your first time. On this episode, I thought I'd take a look at Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, an absolutely critical component uh, for keeping bad guys out of your system. Now, over the years, it's actually grown and it's going pretty well actually for Microsoft, I would say. It's becoming a pretty well-respected piece of technology. And on top of that, of course, all of the Microsoft security products have been rebranded under the Defender brand. And ultimately, of course, they all integrate with each other. So tools like Sentinel, um, things like Defender for Cloud, Defender for Microsoft 365, Defender for Identity, and Defender for Cloud Apps, they all integrate. But it's this one that's really useful because this one helps protect your endpoint devices, whether they're being managed in Intune or on-premises. So what I'm going to do is give you a nice overview of exactly what it is and how it works. So if you're ready to learn, let's take a look. So here we are in the Microsoft 365 Defender Admin Portal. And you can see that I've extended the portal with Defender for Endpoint. Now, Endpoint used to have its own portal, which was pretty confusing, as you can imagine. And so what we're finding is that we're now integrating everything into the Microsoft 365 portal, which makes things a lot easier to work with. The other thing that we've also got in here as well is Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps as well. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to come down into Endpoint here. And we can see that we've got a number of categories. You've got vulnerability management. You've got partners and APIs. You've got evaluations and tutorials. And you've got configuration management. Um, it should also be said that there are quite a lot of additional settings which you can find in the settings portal. So for example, very importantly, if you want to manage your endpoints, for example, your devices, you need to deploy an agent on those devices. So for example, these are the kind of default settings that you can configure here. So the key thing to note is if you scroll right down to the bottom here, there is an onboarding option you can then choose your OS, your operating system, and you can see there's quite a few different options here. And you can then download either a script, you can choose whether you want to deploy it in group policy and it will show you the instructions for that. If you're using Endpoint Config Manager to manage internal devices, great. Um, you can also manage it through Intune as well and it integrates really well with Intune. And of course, if you're using virtual desktop or Microsoft 365 devices, this is particularly useful. So all you need to do is just essentially choose the script and download the uh, offboard or onboarding tool. Likewise, we also have an onboarding uh, or offboarding rather, I should say. So at the end of its life, you can offboard the device as well if you want to. All right. So. First of all, then, what do we see? Well, I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to come here into endpoints and I'm going to have a look at vulnerability management. And the first thing that we can see in vulnerability management is our exposure. Now, one of the tools that we've had in Microsoft security, of course, is the secure score and secure score gives you a overview of all of your security and it scores you in comparison with your peers, for example, your industry peers. So this does something a little bit similar. You've got an exposure score and it talks about things like your devices, how exposed are those devices, um, things like um, the exposure distribution. So which devices are high exposure, things like digital certificates. So if you've got a bunch of digital certificates that are expiring, and it makes some remediation activities. So things that you can go and remediate. Also, it shows you what are the vulnerable software 
uh, options that you have in your organization. Of course, you can expand on all of these. Now that so that's kind of a nice kind of overview. And of course, you can drill in and see more of these um, as we go. So coming down, we can see that we have a number of um, recommendations here. And you can see that you can see 49 devices are not protected. So that typically means that we need to go ahead and we need to deploy that agent. Likewise, it shows me that the a current vulnerability, which is an open SSL uh, vulnerability here, uh, which has been notified here. So that's pretty important. So I want to go ahead and I want to configure that and fix that. All right. So I can scroll down here and you can see it's showing me my potential vulnerabilities and it's showing me, for example, here is a Windows machine. It's running Windows Server 2019 with some applications. Now, typically applications are the main cause of hacking attempts into a system um, because let's face it, Windows, you keep it pretty well patched. It's going to be pretty well secured in there. So I can come in here and I can see what the update is. I can see what the recommendation is. So you can see it shows me um, how many um, uh, associated kind of vulnerabilities there are. Um, and it's pretty high, it's pretty serious here, this one. So it shows me the exposed devices. So which are the exposed devices? And again, if it's installed on any devices, um, and also things like I've got activities here as well. So one of the first things I'm going to want to do, of course, is request remediation. Now, you can also put in an exception option. So if you want to accept, put an exception out to a particular device or something, you can do that. So for this, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to request remediation. And you can see uh, this is the recommendation. Now, if you're using some kind of ticketing system, so for example, ServiceNow or something like that, again, you can also uh, tick this checkbox as well and that will ticket it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that. Um, now, when's the remediation due date? So that could be today, I'll put in tomorrow, just as an example. And you can also put in a priority for this as well. So again, I could say, you know, it's pretty serious. Um, I want to make that a priority. And of course, you can put in some notes in there as well. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on next and I'm going to uh, do that. I can um, export the remediation to a CSV file. So let's say an Excel spreadsheet type report. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to click on submit. So there we go. I have now uh, submitted a remediation request for that particular vulnerability. Great. No. So what else have we got here? So again, you could go through the rest of those. So any remediations that are currently in play, this is where they'll come up. And also it shows you the status of those remediations. So if you've requested remediation on a bunch of machines, you can see that it's uh, going out there. Um, so that's that. Um, inventories. So I can come into my inventories here and you can get an inventory of all your software, things like browser extensions. You can, you've got an inventory of your certificates here. And again, I can go into that software. I can have a look at it and you can see what devices this piece of software is uh, installed on. And I'm bound to get a question here. The fact that, oh, Microsoft is running Linux. Yes, they do run Linux. <laughs> um, I can, again, go to uh, various recommendations. So again, it just takes me back to that um, recommendations. And again, it's requesting an update. So I can go ahead and I can update that. Um, here it also shows me if there are any weaknesses within my organization. So, for example, the number of vulnerabilities um, and the number of exploitable vulnerabilities. So, you know, that's quite concerning. So, again, you can see that these are a number of vulnerabilities here. So, again, I can click onto that. It gives me the details of that vulnerability um, and what related software it's relating to, how severe it is, um, what exposed devices um, is this vulnerability on, and again, is there any kind of related software there as well? So I can again go to security um, 
recommendations, I can come in here and again, I can say, yeah, okay, that's a potential vulnerability and you can go through that process of updating it. So now that we've done that, one of the things that I really love about Defender for Endpoint is that I can come up here to incidents and alerts. And if I click into incidents here, you can see we have a number of fairly serious incidents, I would say. Particularly this one, we seem to have a ransomware attack. So with this ransomware attack, I can click into the incident here and it shows me the attack story of the incident. So I can drill into any of these. I can get more details. I can see what's affected. And more importantly, you can actually see the timeline of the attack that's actually going on. Okay, so, you know, the service was affected, um, the command line was run, the script was run, and you get a complete timeline of that. And that's really super useful. Um, it can also show me a, um, a an incident graph as well. So I can go in and I can view the incidents and you can see I can zoom in on that. I can uh, make that a little bit bigger. I'll come back to that in a second. So we have a number of alerts. So you can see that the incident has generated a number of alerts and you can see also the device that it's affecting and also the, the user that's affected by this. Now, in this case, it's only one machine. So I can click into this machine. We can have a look at it. Um, we can see when it was submitted, who the user was, the last user that logged on. Now, the chances are the user here has probably gone ahead and either clicked on a piece of malicious software, clicked a link, downloaded something, and so on. So one of the things that you can do here is you can set the device value. So for example, a server with a database is going to be a much higher value than let's say a client workstation. Um, I can, you can go to the devices page, which I'll show you in a second. Um, you can also manage tags. So you can, you can create like tags um, to explain these. And I can click on the little ellipse here. And if you want to run an antivirus scan, I can also collect an investigation package. So for example, if you've got analysts within your organization, you might want to collect uh, some information on this incident. Um, you can restrict app execution on this device now. So I can go ahead and I say, I can put in a comment and I can say, right, this is uh, restricted. Okay, so I can say, yep, yeah, I want to confirm that. I want to restrict anything else from running on that uh, device. Now, what else can we do? So I can then say, okay, um, now I might want to initiate an automated investigation or a live response session. So the live response session shows me or could show me exactly what's going on with that device right now, which is kind of cool. Um, this is quite useful, by the way, if you've got like a network type attack. Um, at the moment, this particular device is isolated. So one of the things that I definitely want to do is use it as a learning curve. So rather than let potential ransomware go right throughout my organization, one of the really nice things about Defender for Endpoint is that you can actually um, you isolate the device. All right, which is awesome. Now, one of the services that Defender also offers, and you, it's a paid service, of course, is that you can also ask Defender experts. And Defender experts is a bit like advanced um, support, uh, but for security. Um, so that's a really nice feature, by the way. Um, you can also go to the Action cent uh, Center, and again, you can report it if you think it's inaccurate. So now that we've done that, I can scroll down. Um, I can view all the actions in the action center. I can open the device page for this particular device. And you can see it gives me a little bit more details. So it shows me the risk level of this device, how much it's been exposed. Um, it shows me if it's been patched or if it's up to date. But of course we know that it's now been uh, isolated. All right. So just heading back to that, I'm going to 
pop back into that uh, incident here. And what I want to do is, again, now that we have detected that it's ransomware, um, one of the things that you might want to consider is using one of these playbooks. So here you can ascertain what stage the attack is actually at. So for example, it makes some great recommendations for things like containment. So um, it makes recommendations, let's contain it. So we've gone ahead, we've done that. Stage two, obviously we want to assess the, um, the scope of the incident. So how much damage could the incident potentially have done? Then ultimately what we're looking to do is isolate it. We're looking to prevent a like-for-like -like attack on other systems. So you can see here, it's making really good recommendations, step-by-step -step guides on exactly what to do. And then finally, uh, prepare or prevent the spread of this nasty virus. And indeed, this is one of the things that we've done. We've now isolated this device. One of the nice things about isolation, by the way, is that you can learn what the ransomware is actually doing without it uh, spreading to the rest of your network. So one thing to mention, of course, is if you're on premises with Azure Active Directory uh, and you've got Azure AD Connect connected internally, you definitely want to make sure that you've got an immutable backup. So immutable backup means, of course, that it's read only. So if the virus did spread to your network internally, um, it wouldn't damage your backup. And you definitely want to have some kind of offsite backup with that. All right, so that is the uh, incident. Again, I can just open that up again. Um, I can then say, hey, let's have a look at the incident graph here. Um, you can um, increase that, you can decrease it. So I can zoom in and I can say, okay, I want details either on the, on the user, I want details on the machine and what processes are actually running. So I can actually click on those processes and you can see, right, so if you've got an analyst in your organization, they might want to go through and have a look at this. So again, you can add an alert indicator. I can download the file for analysis. Um, you can also uh, ask defender experts here as well. So one thing's for sure, the user has been attacked here. And I can then go to the user page here and I can get some more details on this particular user. So I can see the details, what incidents are relating to the user. And here you get a complete timeline of everything that's happened to that user. So obviously I, I would then want to isolate this user. So you, you can do that. All right, so that's super cool actually. Um, so as I said, incidents and alerts, really, really powerful. And the one thing that you can also do as well is you can you can see that some of these have already started. You've got that automated response as well. So again, if a like for like event happens again, you know that that automation is gonna kick in. All right, um, so that's a really super feature by the way. So the other things that we've got in endpoint protection, it, we, had, we now have this, this is great. So if you've got any connected applications, so connectors are becoming more and more important in Microsoft 365 and Azure. And we're talking potentially about data connectors. So again, are all these connectors behaving as they should or are they doing anything unusual? All right. Likewise, um, you can, you've got things like uh, an API Explorer. So this is using KQL or Custo query language. Um, so you can run various queries um, if you're hunting or you're looking for potential malicious code. We also have a great portal here for things like evaluations. So there's a whole bunch of, there's an evaluation lab where you can come in and you can actually look at some of these um, evaluations. So things like what devices do we have here? Um, again, you can see that we've got a incident here. And if you look closely at these, some of them are actually linked to other Microsoft products as well. So for example, Defender for Cloud and um, Defender for 365. 
So you've got an evaluation lab here. This is perfect for running simulations, uh, almost like a try before you buy scenario. And there's a number of different suggestions of things that you can do. So you can go to the simulation gallery and you can run a simulation. Again, a fantastic learning tool, this. Um, so here we have tutorials and simulations. So again, we've got um, various simulations. So you can get a file. So things like um, a back door into a system. This is a an automated investigation. And there are a number of third party uh, options here as well. Please note that some of these um, third party options could have a charge. So be careful with that. All right. Finally, coming into configuration management. So this shows you just an overview of your platform, exactly where you are at the moment. So I've got Defender for Endpoint here, so I can click onto that. I can see more details. So I can see the, the status of this particular device. And again, you can see that in more detail by going up to your assets here. And here are my various assets. It shows me, for example, the exposure level. So I've got a particular machine here. I can click onto that machine. And it's not just looking at machines, it's looking at things like network devices and so on. So it will show you if there are any alerts relating to this machine. Um, so any things like malicious activity. So in this case, there has been a little bit of malicious activity. Um, shows you the timeline. So uh, the time period when all of this has been happening. And most importantly, of course, it will make some security recommendations. So these are the things that you need to do in order to fix the problem. Um, you, it will also give you a nice software inventory. So this particular device, again, is a managed device. So I can manage the tags. I can go and hunt using various analysis tools. I can isolate the device on the network. So again, that might be quite useful. You can put in a reason. So again, I want to isolate this device. Do you want, do you still want to allow communications while it's isolated? I'm going to say no in this case. All right. Um, I'm just going to say for support reasons, we're going to isolate this device. All right. So I can go ahead and I can confirm that now. And this device is now been isolated. And what that means is if there is any kind of infection on that device, it's not going any further. Now, the other thing that we've also got here is you've got, again, you can restrict the application execution on that device. You can run an antivirus scan. You can, um, as I said, collect investigation details. <clears throat> you can also set the device value for this, which is really important because that prioritizes everything. Okay. By the way, just mentioning, I uh, recently I've done videos on uh, cloud apps. So if you've not seen the Defender for Cloud App video, then I'll post that link um, in the description. You can go off and you can watch that. Likewise, I've also posted re a number of videos actually on Defender for Microsoft 365. So although I'm not covering everything here, I have done other videos on that and you're quite uh, happy to go off and look at those. Okay, so there you have it. A nice technical overview of Defender for Endpoint, a super important security feature in Microsoft 365 uh, security. And it's so good because it, it links in with all the other security products as well. Now, if you enjoyed that, please bump the like button. It really does make a difference to my channel. And if you've not subscribed, we love subscribers. So go ahead, please hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, uh, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. Because I was looking at my statistics recently. 25% of you that look at my channel are subscribed. So there's still 75% of you who are not. So if you are a regular visitor and you've not subscribed, please go ahead, hit the button. It does make a difference to me. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much. Next week, I'm off to Norway again. There's still lots more work going on. Um, so I look forward to uh, chatting with you soon. All right, have a great week. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. 
here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.